Delta Airlines Flight 191 On August 2, 1985, Delta Airlines Flight 191 is traveling from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Los Angeles, California with a stopover at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Tragically, the aircraft, a Lockheed L-1011 TriStar, which was flying Flight 191, hit a microburst while getting close to DFW. The microburst caused the aircraft to crash just over a mile from the runway, striking a car colliding with two water tanks and disintegrating. Of the 163 people on board, 137 tragically lost their lives, while 25 others sustained injuries. The flight departed Fort Lauderdale on a clear instrument flight rules plan at 1410 CDT, with weather forecasts indicating a possibility of thunderstorms in the Dallas area. Upon receiving updated weather information from the Fort Worth ARTCC, the crew opted to avoid a storm cell by changing their course. Despite the increasingly stormy conditions, the crew continued toward DFW, receiving multiple updates and instructions from air traffic control. As Flight 191 approached DFW, the crew descended through rain and turbulent conditions preparing for landing. At 1803, the aircraft was handed off to the tower controller, who informed the crew about gusty winds. The flight descended to 1,000 feet and encountered sudden turbulence as it crossed the storm front. The captain issued an urgent warning to the crew to prepare for possible loss of control. They fought much to regain control, but the aircraft continued to descend rapidly. At 1805, with the aircraft descending at more than 50 feet per second, the crew's efforts to initiate a go-around were unsuccessful. The aircraft crashed into a plowed field, skidded across Texas State Highway 114, and collided with a car, killing the driver. As the plane continued its uncontrolled movement, it struck two water tanks breaking apart and catching fire. The rear section of the aircraft, though badly damaged, emerged from the flames. Emergency response teams arrived quickly, but despite their efforts, the crash resulted in numerous fatalities. This was marked one of the worst accidents in American aviation history. TWA Flight 841, a scheduled flight from New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport to Minneapolis St. Paul International, faced a dramatic incident on April 4, 1979. The aircraft was a 13-year-old Boeing 727 with over 35,000 flight hours. The flight had initially departed JFK at 8.25 p.m. after a delay, and by 9.47 p.m., the crew was cruising at 39,000 feet. At this altitude, Captain Gibson felt a high-frequency vibration and a strange buzzing sound, followed by a sharp roll to the right. He disconnected the autopilot and attempted to control the aircraft, but the roll continued. After completing a full 360-degree roll, the aircraft began diving rapidly, descending over 34,000 feet in just over a minute. During the dive, the crew extended the landing gear in an effort to slow the descent. At 15,000 feet, one of the members Gibson was able to regain control and pulled the plane out of its dive at around 5,000 feet. The plane had suffered substantial structural damage, including detached slats and a broken aileron hinge. Despite the damage, the crew landed safely in Detroit at 10.31 p.m., with eight passengers sustaining minor injuries. An investigation by the NTSB found that the probable cause of the incident was the extension of the number seven leading edge slat, which caused an uncommanded roll. The investigation showed that this occurred due to the flight crew manipulating the slat controls, although the crew denied any intentional action. A significant issue arose regarding the cockpit voice recorder, which was partially erased by the crew, leading to criticism of their actions. Ultimately, the NTSB concluded that human error was the primary cause of the incident. Saudia Flight 163 Saudia Flight 163 was a routine journey from Karachi to Jeddah with a stop in Riyadh. The date was August 19, 1980, and everything seemed normal as the Lockheed L-1011-200 TriStar took off from Riyadh after a short layover. But just minutes into the flight, the crew received troubling warnings. Smoke was coming from the cargo compartment. What happened next would become one of the deadliest air disasters in history. As the fire spread quickly, the captain made the decision to turn to Riyadh and make an emergency landing. Despite the efforts to control the situation, the plane's center engine was shut down and the crew was fighting a race against time. The landing itself was successful and the plane touched down safely on the runway. However, the situation inside the plane was growing worse by the second. The crew had failed to evacuate the aircraft. The engines kept running, blocking the exit doors and rescue teams struggled to get access. The fire, which had started in the cargo hold, continued to spread and the passengers inside were overcome by smoke. For over 20 minutes, the doors remained closed and by the time they were finally opened, the fire had already destroyed most of the plane. All 287 passengers and 14 crew members tragically lost their lives from smoke inhalation. The investigation later revealed that the fire had started in the cargo compartment where butane stoves were found. 
Though the exact cause of the fire remained unclear, it was clear that the crew's failure to act quickly had a significant role in the disaster. Saudia, the airline, came under scrutiny for assigning a crew with poor performance records to such an important flight. This tragedy, which remains the deadliest aviation disaster in Saudi Arabia's history, led to major changes in aviation safety policies. Flight 163, still today, serves as a chilling reminder of the delicate balance between safety and disaster in the skies. LOT Polish Airlines Flight 5055 LOT Polish Airlines Flight 5055 is remembered as one of the darkest days in Polish aviation history. It was a normal flight en route from Warsaw to New York City on May 9, 1987. The plane, an Elotion IL-62M, took off from Warsaw's Okęcie Airport at 10.18 a.m. For the first nine minutes, everything seemed normal. The plane climbed into the sky and the crew was managing the flight as usual. But then, disaster struck. During the climb, one of the engines overheated and exploded. The explosion sent debris flying into the fuselage, cutting through vital systems like controls and electrical wiring. The damage was catastrophic. The fire that followed destroyed crucial systems, including the plane's control systems, which left the crew struggling to keep the aircraft stable. The cause of the explosion was a mechanical failure. One of the engine shafts had faulty bearings, which caused the engine to fail. This led to the failure of two engines on the left side of the plane, and the fire quickly spread throughout the aircraft. Despite the crew's best efforts, the situation worsened. They attempted to stabilize the plane with backup systems and decided to return to Warsaw. However, the fire spread quickly through the cargo hold and into the passenger cabin. At 11.12 a.m., the plane engulfed in smoke and flames crashed into the Kabati woods outside Warsaw at over 290 miles per hour. All 183 people on board, 172 passengers and 11 crew members, tragically lost their lives. The last words of the crew recorded at the time, Good night. Goodbye, bye, we're dying, left the world completely heartbroken. La Mia Flight 2933 In November 2016, both the sports and aviation worlds were shaken by the tragic crash of La Mia Flight 2933. This flight, carrying the Brazilian football team Chapecoense and its entourage, left just six survivors. The team was en route from Santa Cruz, Bolivia to Medellin, Colombia, to compete in the Copa Sudamericana final. The crash and its aftermath had a significant impact on both industries, leaving a deep scar. The flight was meant to be a chartered service from Bolivia's La Mia Airlines. However, due to air regulations, the team could not fly directly with La Mia. Chapaquense had to first travel to Santa Cruz via Boliviana de Aviación. The Avro RJ-85 aircraft, over 17 years old, was one of three in La Mia's fleet. The flight's trouble began almost immediately. The aircraft departed late, which meant it couldn't make a planned fuel stop at Cobija Airport. With fuel levels dangerously low, the flight crew continued toward Medellin. By the time they were near Bogota, they rejected an emergency diversion to the airport, opting to continue. However, after holding for another flight, the plane lost all fuel and the engines failed. The crash occurred at 2159, killing 71 people. In the wake of the disaster, the Copa Sudamericana final was cancelled, and Atletico Nacional requested that Chapaquenza be awarded the title. The team faced an immense challenge rebuilding, but despite setbacks, they returned to Brazil's top football league just a few years later. As for La Mia, the crash led to its closure, with its operator's certificate being revoked. The airline has not flown since 2016. Japan Airlines Flight 123 Japan Airlines Flight 123 was a domestic passenger flight flying from Tokyo to Osaka when it tragically met its fate on August 12, 1985. The Boeing 747 with 524 people on board encountered a severe structural failure at just 12 minutes into the flight. The decompression caused extensive damage to the fuselage, including the loss of the vertical stabilizer in all hydraulic systems, which led to a loss of control. The pilots tried to control the aircraft by adjusting the thrust and making manual inputs, but they couldn't succeed. A lack of oxygen also made the situation worse. They managed to fly the aircraft for another 32 minutes before crashing into the mountains near Takamagahara. This resulted in the deaths of 524 people, making it the deadliest single aircraft accident in aviation history. Among the victims, 15 crew members and 505 passengers lost their lives, leaving only four survivors. The cause of the disaster was declared a faulty repair carried out by Boeing technicians seven years prior. The repair following a tail strike incident had failed over time, eventually leading to rapid decompression. The tragedy of Flight 123 brought attention to serious safety issues and led to major changes in aircraft maintenance rules. West Air Sweden Flight 294 
West Air Sweden Flight 294 was a cargo flight from Oslo to Tromsø, Norway that tragically crashed on January 8, 2016. The aircraft had departed Oslo Gardermoen Airport at 2311 local time, carrying four and a half tons of mail. The flight was cruising at 33,000 feet when the crew issued a mayday call at approximately 031, after which contact was lost. Flight Radar 24 data later showed the aircraft descending at a rate of 21,275 feet per minute, ultimately crashing 60 seconds later at a speed of 508 knots. The wreckage was found at 310 in a remote area near Lake Akayore, about 10 kilometers from the Norwegian border, indicating a high-energy impact. The investigation by the Swedish Accident Investigation Authority found that a malfunction in the aircraft's internal reference unit caused wrong readings on the captain's instruments. This led to the captain to believe the aircraft was nose up and made him push the yoke down, even though the aircraft was actually level. As a result, the plane went into a steep dive, reaching speeds of over 500 knots, and the pilots became disoriented. Although the first officer had the correct instrument readings, he didn't cross-check or act quickly. The lack of clear communication and the high G-forces made it even harder for the pilots to regain control. The final report stated that the crash happened because there weren't proper procedures in place to handle system failures like this. The flight instruments also didn't prove enough guidance. Other factors included poor communication during the emergency and the pilot's inability to manage the situation due to physical disorientation. Boja Air Flight 213 On April 20th, 2012, Boja Air Flight 213, a domestic passenger flight from Karachi to Islamabad, tragically crashed during its approach in severe weather conditions. This flight marked a significant moment for Boja Air. It was the airline's first evening service on this route since it resumed operations just a month earlier after being grounded for over a decade. The aircraft, a Boeing 737, took off from Karachi at 5.05 p.m. and was scheduled to land in Islamabad at 6.50 p.m. PST. Though the journey began smoothly, as the aircraft neared Islamabad, the weather conditions worsened dramatically. Despite multiple warnings about the weather, Captain Nurullah and his co-pilot, Javed Malik, decided to proceed with landing instead of diverting to safer alternatives like Peshawar or Lahore. The crew struggled to manage the aircraft's automated systems and manual inputs, causing critical errors in maintaining proper airspeed and altitude. Multiple alarms, including wind shear and proximity warmings, went unheeded and by 6.40 p.m., the aircraft crashed just 4.2 nautical miles away from the runway. Tragically, all 127 people aboard, including 121 passengers and six crew members, lost their lives. Investigations into the crash revealed serious systemic failures. The flight crew was found to lack proper training on the aircraft's advanced systems, with Captain Narula logging only 82 hours on the Boeing 737. Boja Air had not implemented necessary training programs, and Pakistan's Civil Aviation Authority had failed in its oversight duties. Cam Air Flight 904 On February 3, 2005, Cam Air Flight 904, a routine flight from Herat to Kabul, Afghanistan, took a tragic turn that would go down in history as the deadliest air disaster in the country. The Boeing 737-200, with 97 passengers and 8 crew members, was nearing its destination when it suddenly disappeared from radar in midst of a fierce snowstorm the worst Afghanistan had seen in five years. The flight, which was expected to land shortly after 4 p.m., lost communication with air traffic control, setting off a frantic search operation. The wreckage was found in a remote, treacherous location on the summit of Chapiri Mountain, 11,000 feet above sea level and about 20 minutes east of Kabul. The recovery mission was nothing short of heroic, but it came with countless challenges, high winds, waist-deep snow, and the threat of landmines. Despite the best efforts of ISAF and Afghan forces, it wasn't until four days after the crash that the wreckage was confirmed and it was clear that there was no survivors. As investigators combed through the wreckage, they faced a grim reality. The flight data recorder offered no answers and the cockpit voice recorder was never recovered. The final investigation released in 2006 suggested the aircraft may have descended below the safe approach altitude, potentially due to pilot error. The exact cause, however, remains uncertain given the lack of critical evidence. The crash claimed 105 lives, including 25 foreign nationals from countries like Turkey, the US, Russia, and Italy. Among the victims were aid workers, engineers, and diplomats, all of whom were lost in an instant.